Well, you know, I don't think of it as historical fiction. Um, to me, that's a, um, that's a genre of, of, of entertaining fiction, and, but um, all fiction is in a sense historical. I mean, it's either, even science fiction set in the future. Um, and, and so um, I don't really worry about that category too much. There are conventions to what we call historical fiction that I don't particularly care or adhere to. Adhere to. I just try to write fiction. And sometimes it's set in different periods of time. I mean, sometimes it's very contemporary. But you know, I'm old enough now to have written uh, fiction that uh, was set in my contemporary time in 1975 that now reads like historical fiction, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I have a hard time making that distinction. What I really wanted to do was to move back. Sometimes if you move back in time, you can see more clearly the present. There's no point in writing so-called historical fiction or fiction set in the past, I don't think, unless it's in some important way about the present. And for instance, the Hindenburg. Um, now the Hindenburg is, yes, that's already happened in May 1937. We all know it blew up. And when I say the Hindenburg, I suspect the same image appears in everybody's mind in its rooms of its exploding, not of its flying, um, but exploding in, in, in New Jersey, Lakehurst, New Jersey that afternoon. And, and that's because um, it was um, the first disaster that was um, broadcast live. Um, it was the radio broadcast, which some of you probably have heard, many of you, I'm sure, have heard that. And it ends, it's a, you know, it ends, ah, the humanity. And he's, he's watching it happen and he's broadcasting it live on the radio. And then by Saturday that week, it was in every movie theater in America because Pathé News reels were what people got their CNN hit from. Every, uh, so it was, it, was, it was a part of everybody's life and it was preserved. And they, we see it over and over and over. Every generation has seen those pictures. The same way, um, um, the collapse of the attack and the collapse of the trade towers in, in New York uh, affected everyone on the planet practically, um, and only 33 people were killed uh, in, the, in, the, in the Hindenburg, which went down. There were probably that many killed in tenement fires in the United States that same day, but because it was reproduced electronically or digital, it wasn't digital, of course, but uh, but it, it entered our imagination in a way that's different. So in a sense that writing about the Hindenburg is casting a shadow, or I should put it another way, when the Hindenburg enters the novel, the shadow of 9-11 enters the novel. And I'd rather write about that and aspects of that indirectly and from a distance than write about it in the immediate present right now. A lot of novelists have tried over the last couple of years to do that. And I think we're still too deeply inside it to, to, to see it and, and to get it really but I could get at it that way. Or about John Brown, I could get at terrorism, for instance. I mean, nobody's against uh, uh, overthrowing slavery. Everybody's in favor of that, even using perhaps violent means to do it. Um, but he was a terrorist by any definition of the word. And um, uh, he was a man who killed people on, for principle. I mean, it's principled violence. And, and so um, I could think maybe a little more clearly about terrorism if I was thinking about John Brown and, and, and writing about John Brown, you see. That's a long answer to a very short question. 